Twin brothers are charged for terror after four suspects were arrested yesterday in Johannesburg. The charge sheet reveals a terror plot to target U.S. and Jewish interests in South Africa. NN7 reporter Ramau Bimako has more. The NPA says the siblings are part of the four people that were planning to bomb the U.S. Embassy and unspecified Jewish institutions. The matter has been postponed to the 19th of this month. Um, for further investigation. But as a state, we don't have any indication from the defense side whether they'll be bringing forth uh, a formal bail application. The Hawks say the accused are sympathizers of international terrorist organization, the Islamic State, and we're planning to join them late last year. Hey, we can confirm that two men appeared in front of uh, the Johannesburg Magistrate Court, charged with contravening the protection of constitutional democracy against terrorism and related activities act. Um, in that the state alleges that the two men uh, tried to cause an explosion at the missions of the United States of America and uh, the Jewish institutions which are, ba to, uh, which are both based in South Africa. The mother of the twins has strongly refuted that the boys were involved in terrorism-related activities. The arrest comes a month after the United States, Australia and Britain issued travel advisory to their citizens warning them of terrorist attacks in South Africa. Ramo Bimaho, and 7 in Johannesburg. Twin brothers Brandon Lee and Tony Lee Tulsi appeared in the Johannesburg Magistrates Court on counts of contravening the Terrorism Act. The accused were allegedly plotting to bomb the U.S. Embassy and Jewish institutions in the country. It's alleged that the brothers are part of the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. And on the debate, we look at the real threat of terror in South Africa. Joining us is Jasmine Opperman, Director at Africa Terrorism and uh, Analysis Consortium. And Yushab Tayyup uh, is an attorney for the Accused. We're also joined by Martin Ewe. He's a senior re researcher with the Institute for Security Studies. Uh, welcome to the show. You at home are most welcome. You're invited to join the discussion on 011-542-2186 or tweet at ANN7TV. Let's start with Yusha Tayub. If you can maybe just give us uh, in terms of the, the charge sheet of the four accused, considering that they're between the ages of 20 and 24 as their representative, uh, is this a case that uh, that, that, that can hold water, in your view. Good evening, Cindy. Yes, look, I don't hold instructions at this stage from the two brothers who were arrested in nuclear. I understand that their families had contacted some other attorney who was on board this morning. Uh, the uh, members of the MLA were contacted subsequently during the day, and I understand that a consultation was held with the family. So I'm not going to be able to give you too much on the brother's appearance in, in, in the Johannesburg court today. Uh, I can, however, speak to you about the two raids that were conducted in Azadville on the 9th of July uh, this year. So if, if you would like me to comment on, on those issues, I, I can start. But certainly I cannot speak to you about the two brothers who appeared in Johannesburg this, 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 this morning. I, I think maybe if you just give us the, uh, the details around the raid, it might give us uh, a better understanding of how extensive this uh, imminent threat is in the country. Yeah, look, I, uh, one, one needs to wait and see. The, the seizure warrants, as I've read them, were issued in terms of the promotion of constitutional democracy and terror and related acts, which is essentially terror legislation that has been adopted in South Africa uh, at the behest of the uh, United States, United Kingdom uh, and, and other Western forces who, who want to curb terrorism. And South Africa has adopted similar legislation into its law uh, for that purpose. So these warrants then uh, uh, permitted the search of particular premises. Uh, in the Azadville situation, it consisted of two houses um, where there was, where there was uh, essentially uh, a, 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 a break into the premises uh, and a kicking down of doors, which was, was fairly dramatic. But be that as it may, the rest of the searches were then uh, were conducted in a, in a cooperative way. My clients cooperated throughout. Uh, when we deal with the Robert home, they essentially came looking for material and began questioning indirectly whether the sons uh, intended to, to travel to Syria and the like, and they received answers in the negative. 
They then proceeded to effect uh, a seizure of what they perceived to be uh, terrorist-related equ equipment. So they seized cell phones, laptops, they even seized the matric pupils' homework, uh, they seized CDs, um, a certain anti-Shia literature, a certain pro-Palestinian literature, uh, and so, so that was what happened at the Rawat home, and there were no arrests effected at that home. Uh, they simply provided an inventory after a four and a half hour, hour search of the premises. Uh, that, that literally has yielded nothing, but it now remains for the state to do a forensic analysis of the electronic and cell phone equipment that they've seized uh, and to see what they wish to do with the information they then obtain. At the uh, Patel home, uh, also one bolt was, 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 was broken, but fortunately the front door was open. Um, when, they, when the police arrived, the senior police officer indicated what the purpose of the siege, search and seizure was. Uh, it was at this point that Ibrahim Patel, who is currently in detention, um, held out that he had what is called a stun grenade, which he had acquired whilst working as a member of the CPF in, in, in the Azadville community many, many years ago. Uh, and he immediately, the, the item was hanging as an ornament in one of the rooms, and he immediately made arrangements to hand that in. Uh, the daughter, uh, the sister Fatima, had then indicated that she had a, a number of bullets in her possession which were acquired by previous uh, attendances at shooting ranges, hunting experiences, usage on the farm, so some .22s, some .352s, some 9mm, all in all 21 in total and that was handed in immediately even before the search uh, commenced and then the search commenced and again, uh, you know, they've taken, they've taken uh, cell phones, they've taken laptops, they've taken computers, and uh, they were then arrested. And uh, when we got to then Saturday afternoon, uh, they were taken to the Cajiso police station. At that point, I had had a conversation with, uh, with, with a, a representative of legal services of the DPCI, who indicated that he was not opposed to, grant, to the granting of bail for the two. I then had a, a, a conversation with the investigating officer on scene and at the police station he also did not have a difficulty with granting uh, bail and uh, we then, I then managed to call out the after hours prosecutor, control prosecutor on duty. Um, he had a look at the dockets, we had an extensive discussion and when he found out that, that they were being charged in terms of Schedule 5 uh, uh, and 6 of the Criminal Procedure Act, one being uh, a, a breach of the Fire Con Iams Control Act in respect of the bullets and the brother in terms of the Explosives Act in terms of the stun grenade he decided that there would be no bail but his indication to me was that a bail would not be opposed on Monday morning and uh, that it would be a formality on Monday morning and so we then prepared the affidavits and we arrived at court this morning only to be told that the state was now uh, requiring a seven day postponement yeah. When Mr. I Tariq, questioned the prosecutor on this, he uh, uh, simply indicated to me that it was a... I, I hate to interrupt you, but we just need to get other views as well. Uh, Martin Evi is a senior researcher with the Institute for Security Studies. What we just heard from the attorney, uh, Mr. Tayyup, is a, a sense of a benign case. You know that everything can be explained away, but we know that there is a reality of a global threat to uh, peace and stability. Can we afford as a country to take the situation lightly? Um, not at all, um, because if it's uh, really um, something relating to terrorism, um, it is very serious. Uh, this is one of the most serious crimes uh, in South Africa in accordance with uh, the 2002 uh, uh, constitutional protection, uh, the, the, the Protection of Constitutional Democracy Act, uh, which is uh, really um, an act um, to fight terrorism in South Africa. Uh, as one of the most serious uh, criminal um, issues. So if really, uh, uh, if the prosecutor can prove uh, that this is uh, really relating to terrorism, uh, then we are talking of a very serious matter. Jasmine, you had spoken about just the brazen uh, way of how these uh, Islamic extremist groups are now recruiting young people based on an ideolo ideology that is sensitive to uh, their own interest. And yet, we, we seem to be very oblivious of how they even gain access to these young people. I think we are oblivious, and I do, I do agree that we have to take this seriously. I think one must make a clear distinction between the case now at hand and South Africa's vulnerability, both on a continental and international context. IS Propaganda Voice has been present in South Africa for some time. 
16 agents involved in the de-radicalization program, all six successful, indicates the presence of the voice of ISIS. The concern with these cases, and we must emphasize that has still to be proven, is that we've, if they are proven guilty, we've gone a step further. Because with the third raid, weapons were actually found. So what are we saying now? Are we saying that we have an ISIS presence that has moved from merely a presence by voice to a presence by recruiters to a presence by people actually planning to execute an attack? And that is a serious, serious allegation. And to prove that, you will have to have very specific plans being made by these individuals. Mr. Tayyip, exactly that. I mean, why would these particular individuals be targeted? They range in age between 20 and 24 and uh, born in democratic South Africa. Why then would they want to take up arms uh, and, and support ISIS in this case? Well, where do you get the conclusion from? I don't, I don't see any proof of ISIS in whatever I've said to you. I don't see any proof of ISIS in the raids and the seizures. I don't see any I will, proof of I will let you know they, they, that they according to reports, and yes, this people. remains to be proven. This remains to be proven, but according to official reports from the Hawks and the intelligence, that there had been a plot to bomb up the U.S. embassy, including Jewish interests. This is not something that we just fathom or thumbsack. Oh. So unless you're not privy to those kind of reports, you can then therefore not suggest that it, it does oh. not exist. Well, the point quite simply is this, you're saying it needs to be proven. I've made quite clear at the start of this conversation that I do not hold instructions from the two brothers who appeared in the Johannesburg Magistrates Court. I do not have sufficient fact in order to be able to discuss with you their position until I have consulted with them and I'm apprised of the facts. The Hawks can make whatever allegations they wish to make. Until it's proven, they simply are allegations. This reference to ISIS, this, uh, the, 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 the fact that you cut me short and said, I'm trying to explain away, the point quite simply is that there's an explanation for having had the stun grenade in the possession. There's an explanation for having these various bullets in the possession. This is not to be escalated to, 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 to a terror threat, to, 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 to want to want to want to comply with a U.S. terror alert. There's nothing of the sort. Let this matter take its course. There is no allegation whatsoever. There is an allegation. There's no proof that, 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 that there's an involvement of ISIS or that any of these people are involved with ISIS yet. These are simply unsubstantiated allegations. The issue here is not ISIS. And I do agree with what is being said. Things have to be proven. But when you are engaged in a counterterrorism strategy, a court case will take its due. But there's also responsibility towards the state when intelligence do become available that is directing towards an attack to take action. And I think the good news of what we have seen is that the government was in a position to take action. Mm. Whatever the outcome, whatever the outcome, the responsibility to protect interest in South Africa has to be always fund, fund, has to be priority number one, informed by verified and factual information, which must not be equated with evidence. These are two distinct entities. Totally, point yeah. taken. But just the capacity of uh, the country to protect, as we heard from the Department of Inter International Relations and Cooperation, no. that we, we are capable of taking care of our citizens and their strategy or, or counter-terror uh, strategy is in place. How confident are you about that? Absolutely. I think that has been uh, what uh, uh, many South Africans uh, have been waiting to see. Um, you will recall when the U.S. issued uh, its alert uh, in June um, and the panic uh, among the South African public, a lot of questions were being asked about the capacity of South Africa, uh, the South African government, to protect the South African citizens. Uh, and I think this uh, incident uh, proves that the government is awake and that it is taking certain matters serious. Um, but that said, uh, I think that, uh, you know, this particular incident, um, from what I hear from the defense, is that um, there, there is still some doubt as to whether, you know, these individuals um, really committed what is related to terrorism. Um, again, we need to look at, uh, the, the, I've not seen the report from the Hawks, uh, but if I can say from what the media is uh, uh, saying is that 
um, look, they, they have been monitoring this case since last year. It is not the first interaction they are having with these individuals. Um, this is probably the third or fourth, which means that these individuals knew that they were being monitored. Uh, and some of the equipment, or some of the, the, the arms that they had with them, um, there is still a lot for them to uh, provide uh, justification in terms of why did they have these arms with them? Why did they have grenade? Um, I, I think with the guns, they, they've made some argument here and there, but uh, again, that's still difficult to, to, to contain uh, under the law. So really, um, it, it is true that um, the case is just beginning, um, but we know from fact that uh, this is not the first time that we are getting in touch with these uh, individuals, and that it is uh, really related to terrorism, and the state still need to prove it. Uh, Mr. Tayu, maybe if you can clarify that, that these individuals, as uh, Mr. Ewe was saying, were under surveillance since October 2015 uh, to date relating to uh, certain acts of uh, terror. And why then would they still have these, the ammunition, as you, you explained, and the stun grenade, if, if they're aware that they're under the, uh, the security radar? My, my, my clients were certainly not aware that they were being monitored by any, by, by, by any agency or, or, or any police. Uh, so I, I can't comment on that. But certainly uh, my clients have said to me that they have nothing to hide. Uh, and certainly they were, they were not aware that they were being monitored. But just going back, going back to, the, to the comment of, of, my, uh, of the other fellow, um, it, it, you know, when the, when the U.S. Uh, issued its terror alert in June, uh, Durko reacted quite swiftly and quite comprehensively uh, in saying that we are more than capable of looking after. And then that statement was watered down by the state for whatever reason. Um, we have no doubt that the, the, the South African uh, uh, authorities have the means of monitoring it. And, and, and we have no doubt that if, if, these if there's any substance to these allegations, uh, then they will be proved uh, uh, in due course. But, but for now... Uh, the Patel family, whom I represent, have, have indicated to me quite clearly that they have absolutely nothing to fear. All right, I just want to make the link between Syria and the, the U.S. primarily because from the reports that we're getting is that the recruits uh, all would traverse to Turkey or the Syria in one way or another. And there's also a report of a young man who was shot there because his family were under the impression that they're fighting a... I suppose a, a moral war, if, for lack of a better phrase. What is it exactly that we're dealing with here, Jasmine, in order for us to connect the dots? We are talking about a terrorist organi a terror organization that has distinguished itself from Al-Qaeda Al by means of an exclusive extremist Salafist ideology. That saying, we are talking about a group that any person, be they Muslim, be they Christian, be it whatever nationality, not falling within that, those parameters, will be an infidel and will be attacked. We've seen it in Saudi Arabia, we've seen it in Bangladesh, we've seen it, we are seeing it in Baghdad. That message is also present in South Africa. But we must keep in mind, we're talking about fringe elements. We must be careful not to see this as a community issue. These are individuals that pick up the propaganda, that makes contact, and then starts acting. It remains individual cases. The arrest of the what we are seeing and the vulnerability and addressing the vulnerabilities we are experiencing are two distinct aspects that we need to focus on. How do you counter the voice of the Islamic State in South Africa? Arrests are not going to do it. How are you going to stop people coming into South Africa to seek high place for themselves. We need to look at our border security aspect. It is a broad-based strategy, m much bigger than mere the arrest of four individuals. That reality we must not keep out of them. Is the migration of people also intertwined with, with terrorism in the sense that because we have the presence of the U.S. and other uh, nationalities, we have, uh, you know, the reports were also suggesting an interest in, in Jewish establishments to distract that as well. Is, is tour, tourism uh, or migration interlinked with terrorism? It is indeed. Uh, the two are intertwined. Um, the, the whole point is that terrorists need to move to other countries. Terrorists need to travel, you know, in order to plan and execute uh, their uh, uh, operations. And to travel, of course, it's part of migration. 
So uh, terrorists moving to South Africa, and that's why we've seen for a very long time uh, many terrorists holding South African passport because it was uh, uh, an easy document to travel with, an easy document that you will not be too much um, <clears throat> or you will not have too much interrogation uh, along the borders uh, of other countries. So it was like a laissez-passer uh, for many of them because they, they exploited the image of South Africa, the diplomatic image of South Africa, and the, uh, the information that people knew about the country as being a stringent country. So yes, uh, when it comes to migration, now we have to look out for which are the migra uh, migrating element. You have to look at whether are they positive or negative element. Uh, the, the negative ones would be, of course, the terrorist uh, 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 groups which are using uh, the, the mass migration to infiltrate other countries. Mr. Tayyip, do you think that your clients have been treated fairly in this process with the litigation process still underway? Do you think that uh, perhaps there was a, an element of paranoia or overreacting uh, when it came to the conditions of their arrest? Yeah, look, uh, like I said to you, the initial search and seizures were, were conducted by bending a burglar gate or grinding through a ball, but throughout the process my clients had cooperated and so the seizures and the searches were conducted in a, in a, very, in a very dignified manner. Uh, and, you know, apart from having to lay on the ground and being questioned about, about uh, Syria and the rest, uh, it was, they, they were conducted in a very fair manner. The, 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 there are issues around the bail application and the change of the state's position on it, which, which are worrisome for me. Uh, but we'll deal with that, uh, whether, whether in a review or appeal or through the litigation. Um, but you see, also, also just based on this discussion, I mean, you know, they, they, are, they are more than, than just ISIS in Syria. So, you know, I don't know why this constant focus on, on ISIS and suggested radicalization. Uh, these are just Muslims concerned about other Muslims or humans concerned about other humans. Uh, and so the suggestion only to ISIS, it, it just seems very unfair to me. Uh, also, my, 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 my fellow debater indicated that people, terrorists have been found in, in respect of South African passports. I don't know if he'd care to mention how many. So, you know, when there's one, there's suddenly a burst that South African passports are being utilized. So it's just a, a great deal of misinformation, and, and we just need to be very careful. But Mr. Uh, I, I think we have uh, loyal South Africans. Yes. Mr. Tayyip, yes. In the absence of having more uh, information in the public domain, what are South Africans generally, uh, how do you interpret this, this bit of information that comes through that four suspects are in custody, allegedly for contravening the Terrorist Act uh, and, and, you know, certain um, devices taken for forensic? What are we supposed to make out of this particular incident? Well, this is this is the point, you know. Uh, do, do we do we get into the paranoia now, or do we wait for the information to come out? It's quite simple. The the, the cell phones have been seized, the computers have been seized. These will now be forensically analysed, and the state will decide what it wishes to do with the information which it gathers from 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 this equipment. Uh, but for now, I have an explanation for two of them in regard to, to, to a transgression of the Firearms Control Act, and I have an explanation for a transgression of the Explosives Act. My, 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 my fellow debater suggests that there were grenades. Let me remind him it was a stun grenade acquired whilst my client was a member of the CPF. So, you know, it's not an illegal item. It's, it's, ir it's ir irresponsible of my clients to have been holding on to these items for this period. But it's not illegal. He, he, the, 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 he, it can be explained. So, so, so insofar as, 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 as the links to terror are concerned, they have not been charged in terms of anti-terror legislation. The, 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 the warrants were issued in terms of terror legislation, but my clients have not been charged in terms of terror legislation. All right, Mr. Tayyip, thanks. Uh, we really appreciate it. Of course, we, we're making the distinction. His clients are not necessarily been charged with the, the terrorist <laughs> act. It's the two twin brothers uh, in this case who are said to have yes. the links yes. and, and, and intending to, to blow up the U.S. Embassy and Jewish establishments. But the tone, tonality that I get from Mr. Tayyip may be confined to his client's uh, representation is that this is much ado about nothing. Everything can be explained and it will all be well. Do you get that sense from your research that uh, terrorism in South Africa is contained or we're able to, to manage that there won't be a catastrophe uh, in, in, in any time uh, soon? 
Well, I, I think so far, one, uh, there, there is no doubt that, of course, um, uh, the government has been able to contain the threat. Um, since uh, the year 2000, South Africa has not uh, witnessed any major terrorist attack, and that itself is a great achievement. Uh, in a world in which we are having increasing uh, terrorist attacks everywhere, where every, uh, every year there is a new country which uh, is being attacked by terrorist groups. We've seen uh, the past Ramadan, uh, how uh, bloody it was, you know, terrorists attacking everywhere, Muslim countries, non-Muslim countries. So, um, yes, my feeling is that, um, look, the first thing we need to do for this particular case to go ahead and for the law to take its course is to disassociate it from any religion. Um, terrorism is not about religion. It's not about Islam. It's not about Christianity. Um, it's about individuals who have committed crimes that are uh, outlaw uh, 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 by the law of the, uh, the nation. So I think it is from that perspective that we can make progress uh, in terms of prosecuting these individuals and getting the truth. Okay, in the absence of having a profile of who the leaders of Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab or ISIS are, the mules are e e essentially the, the ones that will, will get the brunt of the law. But you are saying that arrests are not the, the, the right solution to deal with uh, or have as a counter-terrorism strategy? What I'm saying is if one looks at counter-terrorism, if we talk a race, it is but only part of a counter-terrorism strategy. Let's take the two individuals that actually were re-diverted last year, 2015, according to information, to go to Syria. What has happened from that time until today? Were they simply left to their own devices? sent back into the communities, or was there a concerted effort to implement a de-radicalization program? If we arrest people and put them in prison, this is the ideal university for violent extremism. This is where ideas are being spread. So how are we going to deal with these people the moment incarceration takes place? Because you want them released back into society. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks indeed to our panelists for joining us uh, this evening. And of course, we had Martin Ewi. He is a senior researcher for the Institute of Security Studies. Jasmine Opperman is a security expert. And Yusha Tayub is an attorney for two of the accused in this uh, terror-related um, terror case. Of